If we have a very simple situation like we have here, that we only have one charge, then this is the potential anywhere, any distance you want from this charge. If R goes up, if you're further away, the potential will become lower. If this Q is positive, the potential is everywhere in space positive for a single charge. If this Q is negative, everywhere in space the potential is negative. Electro electric static potential can be negative. The work that I do per unit charge coming from infinity would be negative if that's a negative charge. And the potential when I'm infinitely far away, when this R becomes infinitely large, is zero. So that's the way we define our zero. So you can have positive potentials near positive charge, negative potentials near negative charge, and if you're very, very far away, then potential is zero. Let's now turn to our Van de Graaff. It's a hollow sphere. has a radius r, about 30 centimeters, and I'm going to put on here plus 10 microcoulomb. It will distribute itself uniformly. We will discuss that next time in detail, because it's a conductor. We already discussed last lecture that the electric field inside the sphere is zero, and that the electric field outside is not zero, but that we can think of all the charge being at this point here, the plus 10 microcouillon is all here as long as we want to know what the electric field outside is. So you can forget the fact that it is a, a sphere. And so now I want to know what the electric potential is at any point in space. I want to know what it is here, and I want to know what it is here at point P, which is now a distance R from the center. And I want to know what it is here at a distance little r from the center. So let's first do the potential here. The potential at point P is an integral going from R to infinity if I take the electric force divided by my test charge Q dot the R But this is the electric field. See, it is force times distance is work, but it is work per unit charge. So I take my test charge out. And so this is the integral in R to infinity of E dot dl, the R, sorry. And that's a very easy integral because we know what E is. The electric field we've done several times follows immediately from Coulomb's law, and so when you calculate this integral, you get Q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r, which is no surprise because we already had that for a point charge. So this is the situation if r, little r, is larger than capital R. Precisely what we had before. We can put in some numbers. If you put in r equals r, which is uh, 0.3 meters, and you put in here the 10 microcoulomb and here the, the 30 centimeters, then you'll find 300,000 volts. So you get 3 times 10 to the fifth volts. If you um, take r equals 60 centimeters, you double it. If you double the distance, Potential goes down by a factor of two, it's one over R, so it will be 150 kilovolts. And if you go to three meters, then it is 10 times smaller than it is 30 kilovolts. And if you go to infinity, which for all practical purposes would be lobby seven, if you go to lobby seven, then the potential for all practical purposes is about zero. because R is so large that there's no potential left. So if I 
if I want to Lewin march from infinity to this surface of the Van de Graaff, and I put a charge Q in my pocket, and I march to the Van de Graaff, by the time I reach that point, I have done work. I multiply the charge now back to the potential. That gives it work again, because potential was work per unit charge. And so the work that I have done then is the charge that I have in my pocket times the potential, in this case, the potential of the Van de Graaff. If I go all the way to this surface, which is 300,000 volts, if I were a strong man and I would put one Coulomb in my pocket, that's a lot of charge, then I would have done 300,000 joules of work by just carrying the one Coulomb from lobby seven to the Van de Graaff. That's about the same work I have to do to climb up the Empire State Building. It's the famous MGH, my mass times G times the height that I have to climb. So I know how the electric potential goes with distance. It's a one over R relationship. Now I have arrived at the Van de Graaff. I am at the surface with my test charge. And now I go inside. And I slosh around inside. I feel no force anymore. There is no electric field inside. So as I move around inside, I experience no force. That means I do no work. So that means that the potential must remain constant. So the absence of an electric field here implies that the electric potential everywhere is exactly the same. Inside is the same as on the sphere. Because no further work is needed in marching around with a test charge. And so for this special case, I could make a graph of the electric potential versus R. And this is then the radius of the Van de Graaff. And that would be a constant all the way up to this point. And then it would fall off as 1 over R here. And in, for the numbers that we have chosen, the potential at the maximum here would be 300,000 volts. Just as when you look at maps, where you see contours of equal height of mountains, which we call equal altitudes, here we have surfaces of equipotential. And if you had a point charge, or if you had the Van de Graaff, these surfaces would be concentric spheres. The further out you go, if the charge is positive, the lower the potential would be. They would be nicely spherical surfaces. Suppose now we had more than one charge. We had a plus Q1 charge. And we had a minus Q2 charge, for instance. And you're being asked now, what is the potential at point P? Well, now the electric potential at point P, Vp, is the potential that you would have measured if Q1 had been there alone. And you have to add the potential that you would have seen if Q2 had been there alone. Just adding work per unit charge for one with work per unit charge of the other. And if this is negative, then this quantity is negative and this is positive. So when you have configurations of positive and negative charges, then of course, depending upon where you are in space, if you're close to the plus charge, the potential is almost certainly positive, because the 1 over R is huge. If you're very close to the negative charge, again, the 1 over R of this little charge will dominate, and so you get a negative potential. And so you have services of positive potential, and you have equipotential services of negative potentials, and so there are surfaces which have zero potential. And they're not always very easy to envision. 